Hey everybody, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive here on a Monday night. It is the 16th of May and we are going to be doing mystery card night tonight. And I just figured out that the clues that I have printed are the clues. <laughs> clues from last time. So we're going to punt. <laughs> and first of all, though, we're going to make sure that I'm live. <laughs> and I am. So yay. Hi, Elaine Rebeck. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Hi, Mitzi Stanley. <laughs> so, oh, it's always something. <laughs> and you would think that um, it would always go so smoothly. And it never seems to, but we always make it work, right? <laughs> so, I, Louie Ann Johnson, I do not um, fret for a minute or have a doubt in my mind that we won't be able to make it through Mystery Card Night. Hi, Linda Hodge. Hi, Betty Pyle. Hi, Susan Hendricks. <laughs> Hi, Christina Brome. So, we have Mystery Card Night, and for those of you just tuning in, we will be going through the clues momentarily. Hi, Cindy Runtree and Mary Ann and Aaron and Leslie and Karen Cotton and Rhonda and Pat. Oh, my! <laughs> you guys are rocking and rolling right in. Hi, Sharon and Donna. So, we have the May Mystery Card Night. Hi, Jennifer Jones. Hi, Mary Ann. Hi, Oh, you guys, it's all rolling in at different times. There's Barb Johnson. <laughs> Woo! So you guys, I've got like the timing is off just so slightly between the two systems here. Hi, Andrea. For a moment, I thought Facebook was going to give me some hiccups, but they didn't. It looks like we're all here together and we're going to be stamping very soon. Hi, Dolores. So, oh, Mystery Car Night is becoming one of everybody's favorites. It is uh, probably the two-year anniversary, you guys, of doing Mystery Car Night. Hi, Karen Wetstein and Donna. Um, I did Mystery Car Night for the very first time. It was the, I want to say it was the Thursday after Memorial Day in May of 2020. Hi, Ann Bellinger. Um, <laughs> I hope you don't lose powder, power either. <laughs> Hi, Barbara Gavi. Um, and so it's two years. And since May, we only missed June because in June, I wasn't going to ever do another Mystery Night. It was like a one and done type thing. Hi, Penny Powell. Thanks for sharing, Karen. Hi, Judy from Midlands of South Carolina. Um, a road trip, Penny's on a road trip, awesome. Hi, Robin Sender. So in June though, <laughs> I got so much positive feedback, you guys, that you love the mystery card night. And so then in July, I made a deal with Kelly that I had so much going on that Kelly would help me do mystery card night. So it was a collaborative effort. And sometimes she even does mystery card night for me if I have things going on and uh, travels that are happening. Hi, Jennifer. Um, oh, your daughter is with you tonight. That's awesome. I hope you guys love it tonight. Hi, Sherry from Livonia, Michigan. Um, so, whew, you know, you guys, we're going to wing it tonight. I don't have printed out clues. <laughs> well, officially, I only have two of them printed out. Oh, so hi, Susan. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Mary Lemke. Um, so in the past, I've always had a printout copy. And since I've quit my day job, I've had to coordinate the printing elsewhere. <laughs> and so I would usually pay for it at um, a friend's business. Um, but um, Kelly. Hi, Wendy Westmoreland. Hi, Susan Murphy. Kelly offered to print it for me this time. Hi, Jean Torliger and Donna Simmer. Um, so <laughs> Kelly offered to print it. So I sent her a file. Well, me trying to be proactive, I not only saved the May file, but I'm like, oh, I'm going to work ahead on the June file. Hi, Dion and Linda. And so the June file... <laughs> Oh, is what I think I sent to her, which only had the first clue matching May and then the last clue. So it's going to be what it is. <laughs> so Barb is working on the scavenger hunt. Woohoo! So I've gotten three scavenger hunts back, you guys, so far. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. I'm ready to solve the mystery with us. Woohoo! <laughs> Hi, Judy Bobo from Upper Peninsula in Michigan. So you guys... We're not going to stress at all. We're going to get through this because this is actually a very easy card. I think that even if this is your first time making a card, that I think you will be able to follow along without written clues. I generally have scrap paper that I um, write on and kind of mark up and kind of mock put together with you. If I find that you guys are really on the struggle bus, I may show you mine just to... Um, help, but I don't know if I need to do that. So don't ask unless you need it. <laughs> so generally for those that are new, hi Joan Gordon, hi Laura Wagon. 
Um, hi, Jody Sermon from Amherst. Um, for those of you that are new, I do not share the final card. I usually share it after my Facebook Live class on Thursday night. So generally, I am live on Thursdays. Mystery card nights get squeezed in here on Monday nights. Uh, so I do share the card on Thursday night, and that's when I do the drawing for the winners. Hi, Renee. Thanks for sharing, everybody. This is a great video to share with your friends and family uh, on Facebook because this is a free card making event and it's fun and it encourages you to use what you have in your Stampin' Vault or Arsenal. Hi, Julie Frost. Uh, so my, uh, so what, what this uh, has evolved into is this is not a class you have to pay for and I really encourage you to use what you have at home. Use those stamps, use those inks, use that paper, use those embellishments, use that ribbon that you have not used yet. <laughs> Hi, Christine Domino. Hi, Arlene and Kathy Groves and um, thanks for sharing, Deanna. I appreciate it. So use that stuff that you guys have at home. Don't go buy something special just for Mystery Night. I, unless you are a brand new stamper and you don't have anything to work with, then you might need to invest in something. But I highly encourage you to use what you guys have at home. So um, I also don't want you to stress about anything for the next hour. This is our time to get together and not think about all the worries that are going on in your life around you. <laughs> I want you to think about stamping and have fun and just de um, divest or whatever, like um, unwind for a moment. Hi, Deb Norman, checking in from a baseball game. Woohoo! Yes, definitely catch the replay button, Deb. So kudos to Deb Norman. She is on my team, the Be Happy Stampers, and we did a team swap and she did this card and I saw this layout and I'm like, oh my gosh, I think this would be perfect for mystery night. So round of applause to Deb Norman for sharing this idea of this layout with me. Um, and so I'm really excited to share it with you. It is a fun fold. Uh, I love trying to sneak fun folds into the mystery card night for you guys. Hi, Kathy King. Woohoo. So just a reminder, do not stress. This is about having fun. Uh, try not to get overwhelmed. There is no, um, like, we are, I work at a certain speed. Hi, Hildy. Hi, Darla Zell. Um, just know that this is live at the moment. It is actually 6.07 p.m. On a, at Central Time Zone. As soon as we're done and I hit the end button, it will actually go straight to Facebook via in the video section at my page. Or um, I will soon there upload it to YouTube, either tonight or tomorrow. Maybe not tonight. Um, in the process of planting flowers and vegetables in the garden tonight, um, we have daylight here until about 8.45, 9 o'clock if we push it. And so um, the fingernails might look a little bit dirty tonight because they've got the dirt going on. <laughs> I tried to clean them, but you know how that goes, you guys. If you're into gardening and vegetables and flowers, you get dirty fingers. So thanks for sharing, Kathy Jackson. Okay. So just a reminder, have fun, don't stress. If you can't keep up, don't worry, follow along, try to watch what's going on, and then you can always catch the replay. Hi, Linda from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, you grew up in Fond du Lac. Awesome. I bet we're related. It just never fails that, you know, like for third, you know, I'm, my mom and dad know the whole family history about who's related to who. So <laughs> hi, Marsha Boucher. Hi, Kimberly Wolf. Okay. So give me a shout out, you guys. Hi, Kay Weir. If you've done Mystery Night before, give me those hearts. If you have never done Mystery Night and this is your first time, give me those thumbs ups. I'm kind of curious how much explaining I need to do. If I have not so many new people, we kind of work it through as we go. But if there's a lot of newbies, I try to answer questions and go over things a little bit more. I have a great community of people watching right now. They are amazing. And if somebody asks a question and they know the answer, they will jump right in and answer it too. So be watching the comments. Hi, Linda Kester. Be watching the comments and also I will try to answer as I can. Oh, look at all those hearts. Woohoo! Woohoo! I love it. So, okay. Um, so Andrea had some dirt therapy today. Awesome. I love it. So I got over half of my plants planted last year with adding onto the hive, you guys, for the last two years, I've been out of the planting world. And this year I finally was like, I have a little time. I can plant some plants and I'm going to have all the purples and the pinks and the yellows and the white flowers in front of the house this year. Woohoo! So lots of people have done this before. So that's exhaust. So you guys, because I don't have the written out clues per se, I think you guys will be relatively successful because you know the drill. So, okay. Um, I have not seen any spammers or spam bait come through. Just know, do not click on anything from anybody that is not, um, like that they don't look safe, right? 
um, sometimes people will be like, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful and um, you should contact me. No, don't ever fall bait for any of that stuff. It, that, that's like a high level, but you will get it. And I'll be watching like a hawk and try to delete those comments. But just know that nobody should ever, you should never have to click on anything to pay for anything for this class, okay? So no clickbait, you guys. Um, another thing too is if you are new, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your loyalty and your support. Um, I can help you get um, all the Stampin' Up! supplies that you need. Um, but for Mystery Night, there are no requirements on what kind of products you use. If you have whatever brand of whatever, 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 it does not matter. Mystery Night is all about you guys using what you have. So Darla loves planting flowers and veggies. Yeah, we're going all out on our garden this year. Tyler has committed to helping me process. I do not like to process vegetables and tomatoes and all that stuff by myself. I do not like to sat, like stand at the stove for eight hours making salsa and canning it. But if I can do it with somebody, I don't mind. Like I don't mind the process. And so Tyler and I had a nice little talk in and I said, we can plant a garden, but you have to help me. <laughs> so hi Stacey Burns just finished prepping. Woohoo. So yeah, so that is the deal. We have a nice garden. Go, it's going to be going in. He wrote it till it yesterday. So, um, what else you guys, anything else? Oh, um, I try to give directions onto like as to the direction of the card, you guys. But if for some reason your card ends up going the opposite direction, do not fret. It's okay. You know, there's no wrong or right way for your card. It is going to be perfect the way it turns out. So um, don't stress about that either. So, whew, um, I don't know if there's much else. But um, my little hint here, you guys, for hi, Lisa. Hi, Sandy Zadoon. Hi, Sherry Martin. Hi, Char. Woo, lots of people still rolling in. My, um, my tip for you guys is I always do the mystery we have for uh, like a year now. We've always done the mystery car night based off of the sweet bundle class that we feature the month. So just so you know, we did use Your Biggest Fan and the Hey Sports Fan suite of products to do ours. So that might give you a little clue as to like what my card might look like. Um, and my designer series paper is actually designer series paper this time. It is not um, paper with scribble marks on it. <laughs> so that might help to envision this a little bit better. Um, yes. <laughs> Cindy, that is so true. Nothing worse than a bunch of garden items being dropped off in the kitchen and have, have fun with this. You know, that is exactly what I don't want. And I feel bad if I've ever done that to my mom, because I can see that I've probably uh, maybe of like, here, mom, I don't have time to process these tomatoes. You want them? And she'd be like, what do you say? No, <laughs> you do it, right? Oh, so hi, Mary Lou Moss. Oh, it's good that you're back for a bit here. I'm, I missed you too. <laughs> hi, Julie Bierschbach and Millie Kindle from Montana. All right, you guys. Are you ready to go over clue number one? Because I am rocking and rolling and ready and the light is shining. I can see how bright it looks in this room. And I know I have about like three hours of daylight <laughs> to get those plants on. So I'm ready to get going if you guys are. Hi, Kathy Balzarini from the Upper UP, just like Judy Bobo. I wonder if you guys are familiar with each other. Um, finally got the email early. So, oh, Missy, yes, we got you set up on emails. Oh, that is a good reminder. I have emails that I send out about every class all the time, you guys. And Mitzi was one that reached out to me and said, why am I not getting your emails? Well, we got her set up. Latokia, I could have sworn we've got you set up, but you just reached out to me and said, well, you're not yet. But if you guys aren't getting my emails, we need to figure out why. Because I have a, a system where I store your emails and I have to make sure you have a tag on your email address that you are either card class local to me or your card cl class long distance. And so you got, you're in one of the groups usually because sometimes I do in person only and then I don't email my long distance people. Hi, Laura Wood. So I just got to make sure you have a tag. So if you guys aren't getting anything, please do reach out to me. I want to make sure you're getting my emails if you want them. Um, you can always head over to my website, cardsbycrispy.com and subscribe to my newsletter, which subscribes to all of my emails about all my classes and upcoming sales. So, whew, okay. Got me a little long-winded there. Hi, Vicki Fritz. Okay, we're going to look down at clue number one, you guys. This is like basically it. So like we've got clue number one. So what happened was I think I sent her the June file, which had the May clue number one, but it had all the wrong clues from a past one. So anyways, we're going to be good to go here. So 
You guys, I mentioned that this is a fun fold and there's, it feels like there's not a lot of pieces. So we are going to go through those. First and foremost, we always go through just to make sure. Hi, Julie. Um, Kayla, your first time watching tonight. Woohoo. Let's see how it works. You guys. All right. Now that there are over a hundred people watching, I'm going to repeat that this is not going to be a normal mystery card night. You guys, it's going to be, um, more like a fly by the seat of our pants. Normally, just so you guys know, if you've ever watched any of my past videos or you know caught them as replays, I generally have a clue for every step of putting the card together. There was a misprint of the clues, and so I only have the first and the last, which are generally, like the last one's always the same, and then the first one was right. So just so you know, if you're new to me, like, you're, this is going to be a more uh, touch and go kind of situation. Like we might need to get the scalpel out or the, the scissors or, you know, <laughs> we might have to, you know, do a little more surgery <laughs> for this one. So, okay, back to this clue. But first, for things first, um, we have clue number one. This was what was published on the website and Facebook. And by the third email I sent, I got it straight, you guys. It was a hot mess of the last two weeks with the launch of the catalog with all the product shares, in-color clubs, and um, GSP samplers. And so I thought I had the email correct, but it took me to the third try, but I got it. So I think what we're going to do is just make sure everybody's good with this. And I didn't see you asking for a card base just for new people. That there is a card base, right? I never call out a card base. I always call out, you guys, cardstock, pattern paper, and sometimes scraps, okay? So I do not, like, in the last one, too, there isn't generally, I don't say card base. So this one's a fun fold. So just not to throw anybody off, we'll start putting it together and you'll start to see um, this card come together. So there, for new people, I do have some definitions here. Tall for T, or T for tall and W for wide, meaning a direction for your paper. So this is tall and this is wide, okay? So we have, so Cindy Bruntree called it out and so did Deb. They said just when we got it. Um, so Cindy said cardstock one is primarily going to be our base. That is correct. But we're going to go back here. W and V, for those that are new, mean white and vanilla. And so there is one piece this time. And I always reference pieces over here. So one piece, if there's two, it would say two pieces. But in this very first one, there's only one piece of either white or vanilla. And we say white or vanilla because if you have more cool colors, we use whites. If we have more neutral, warm colors, we love to use vanilla. I say vanilla too. Uh, so, uh, and just so the orient, you know, the orientation of this piece, the white vanilla, it goes horizontal. This is going to be a horizontal card. So three and three quarters by two and three quarters. This is our first one here. Thanks for sharing, Marilyn. I appreciate it. And to everybody else who has shared, I really appreciate it. Okay, so we have two different card stocks, you guys. There's a card stock one and a card stock two. Ultimately, you could make them the same color if you wanted. If you want them different, one should complement the other. Now, do not pay attention to my scraps of paper here, you guys. I go to my drawer and find copy paper that I have. So don't worry that mine does not look good together. It, this is not meant to be a card put together. My card, I'm just going to show you, is right here upside down, okay? And I told you it has the Hey Sports fan. Oh, no, you didn't see it. Good job. Okay, so mine features like the Hey Sports fan. So mine is going to be these colors, like Bumblebee and Poppy, Night of Navy, Evening Evergreen. So Anyways, back to business here. Cardstock number one is five and a half by four and a quarter. And at the moment, it doesn't matter which orientation your paper is because we're not assembling yet. And um, I did reference on here though, five and a half by four and a quarter cardstock one. So you guys, if you're familiar with an A2 size card, this is going to be your base then. So cardstock one, whatever color you want it to be, plus if we skip ahead a little bit here, scraps of paper. Um, so I wrote on here, plus you're gonna want scraps of this. So, and you may or may not need the scraps, you guys. It does say optional, right? Optional. Okay, so coordinating cardstock one is right here. Now you have coordinating cardstock two. <clears throat> it is going to be another piece of like a solid cardstock. Um, I have here, it is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And again, at the moment, it doesn't matter the orientation, but I'm definitely holding it horizontal so you get an eye for that. It is gonna be a horizontal card. 
cardstock two, CS cardstock two. Plus, I also have reference that there should be scraps potentially. You guys, I'm not quite sure what you're gonna do for um, your front, and this will come together as you make the card. Okay, so we have our two cardstock colors. Now, there are two pattern papers, and I actually pulled two pattern papers that um, Deb actually used on her card, um, which complement each other very nice. No, um, Andrea, cardstock one is not folded. I would reference the if it's folded or scored if it needs to be. This is ultimately going to be your card here, your back of your card. All right, so pattern paper one is a map size, five and a quarter wide by four inches tall. So if you're looking at my designer paper, there's no pattern to it, right? So it could go either way. But you might have a pattern like this where you would need for it to be um, horizontal. Hi, Heather Brenner. <clears throat> so if you cut a pattern paper, you want to make sure that you are keeping it horizontal. So five and a quarter by four. So this is pattern paper one for me. And then there's a pattern paper two. So one piece and it says it's 12 inches wide by three inches tall. This is where the scoring comes in, you guys. Scored at four inches and eight inches. Hi, Barb Baylor. Um, yes, like a postcard, Andrea, you're right. Hi, Pamela Leahy. So scored at four inches and eight inches on the 12 inch side. So I wanted to show you guys how to do this. So this is my pattern paper that I picked. Well, copied Deb's actually. Mine is going to be the Hey Sports fan if I if you guys caught that. Okay, but I want to show you my scoring tool, how I would use this. So this is something Stampin' Up! offers in their catalog. And sometimes you can put these little clips where you need to do the scoring, like if you're doing multiple so that you don't always have to hone in on the number. Um, so I'm going to butt up my paper here in the corner and I'm gonna score at four inches and also eight inches. So, all right, so that works. Okay, now we're going to, I wonder, I wonder if I could pull up my actual PDF <laughs> to put this together, because I actually made the, I wrote, anyways, side story. So, so we have it here, scored at four inches and eight inches on the 12 inch side. So you saw that I put it at 12. Now, if you have a different type of scoring tool, that is quite all right. So you need scraps of paper in white or vanilla or your coordinating card stocks and then your stamps, you guys. Hi, Elizabeth Ray from Texas. So far, so good. Yay. Stamps, focal images not to exceed so this is where you're going to have to work with me on what you may or may not do. Um, hi, Randy Schultz. Hi, Angela Knutson. Your stamps, um, we're going to assemble the card first, and then you are going to be let free to do whatever you want for your imagery. Is there a way we can get the one sheet showing the clues to print versus printing out three papers? Is there a one way we can get one sheet showing the clues to print versus printing out three papers? I don't know what, um, Judy, what you're asking about three papers. I usually have the clue on one paper like this that I put as a picture and there's only one paper. You're going to, Judy, you're going to have to explain to me what you mean by three papers. Andrea, what are those dimensions? I'm not quite sure which piece you're referring to. Um, on here I have pattern paper is 12 by three. And then the first one is five and a quarter by four. Um, Love shares and actually showed to my story. Ha ha, thanks, Angela. I appreciate it. So, Andrea, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have you look at this real quick, you guys, in case you missed any of the measurements. Um, we will also need coordinating. Hi, Susan Pacheco. You'll need any coordinating inks, markers, pencils, anything for coloring, um, your sentiments and image, ribbon, thread. So, like I mentioned that I did Hey Sports Fan. So, I'm going to definitely pull in the Baker's Twine pull in any embellishments that you want. I pulled in the resin stars because they go really nicely. The This is the bundle that I use. Highlight the directions on the email or what? I right click and highlight and then print. The paper you are holding and when I go into your blog email, it is three to four pages. Mm, okay, so maybe you should access it from, I'm not sure. So, um, 
highlight the directions on the email or what? The long piece. So I take a picture of the measurements with phone. Don't print anything. Okay. So, um, so Judy, we're going to have to talk because maybe, because I do email. I do have it on my Facebook page and I do have it on my email, my website. So there's three different ways you can access this and hopefully maybe a different one will work better for you. Okay. All right, you guys. So if you look here, <laughs> it goes straight to a different clue. So um, we're going to hope that the directions only. I right click and highlight them print. Yeah, so Judy, just reach out to me and we'll see if we can figure out a different way to make this work for you so that you don't have three, three pages to print because three pages is a lot to print. <laughs> Not worth all the paper. So um, maybe you could even take a screenshot on your phone and bring up the screenshot and then just look at that. So, all right, you guys. Are you guys ready to rock and roll with my imaginary clue number two? And it's going to be harder, but not unmanageable. So we're going to have me talk through the clues. Um, <laughs> boy, we are quick mystery card makers. <laughs> we'll talk later, Judy. Perfect. And I think I'm still waiting. We, we had an open conversation from something about a week or two ago. So as well. All right, you guys, we're going to move on to my imaginary clue number two. Okay. Okay. So work with me here, guys. Very, I'll be, I'll try to go slow and talk very um, slow and precise. <laughs> okay. So the first clue um, is, you guys, what you're going to do first. Judy, can you select the pages that show the measurements and then print on both sides? Yo, you guys are giving lots of advice to Judy. I love it. So hopefully maybe, Judy, you'll figure something out. So you guys, this is our pattern paper one, and this is our cardstock one. Clue number two said, adhere pattern paper one to coordinating cardstock one, you guys. So all we're doing, you can do whatever, I'm not gonna do it, but any adhesive you want, you can take your tape runner, you know, use your tape runner. If you are a liquid glue girl like myself, you could put liquid glue on the back. Um, some people, I even had a class on Friday night, people put tear and tape all over the back. Ultimately, clue number two, I'm gonna have to keep track of this, clue number two, is adhering, putting adhesive on the back of your pattern paper, and you are going to adhere it to your cardstock number one. And just so that it stays together for me, you guys, because uh, I don't want to, I actually want to make this into a card without giving you too much, um, <laughs> too much, too many hints. I'm just going to do it like that so that it's ready to go. So, Here's my thing, guys. So some of you are new, but those that know what's going on, what I ask is when you're done with clue number two, which is adhering these two pieces, it looks Christmassy and, and watermelony at the same time. When you guys are done adhering these together, which is clue number two, please um, give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Let me know that you guys are done with this. So we had our cardstock one and pattern paper one adhere them together. This is ultimately becoming your card base, you guys, okay? <laughs> so, all right, now my thing is I'm going to have to keep track of, okay, so that was clue number one, and now we have two, and now we're on to clue number three. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to try to keep track of it. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, looks like you guys caught on to clue number two. Hi, Jeannie Parker. Um, looks like you guys caught on to clue number two. Number three is going to be easy as well. This is probably the best mystery night that I could have picked to not have the right um, printout. So hi, Sherry Reeves. Okay, we're going to move on to clue number three. Okay. All right, I'm going to flip the camera down, you guys. All right. Clue number three involves your piece of designer series paper. You remember the instruction said to score it at four and eight, which put basically divides it into thirds because 12 divided by three is four. All right, so clue number three is you're going to fold it on the score lines. This is what I want. Hi, Denise Rye. This is what you want for, like I want for my top. So what we're gonna do is this side gets scored back this way and you definitely wanna take your bone folder and burnish it. And then the other one goes back this way. All right, so just to show you how this opens, you guys, it opens like this, right? So it kind of makes a backwards Z. All right, so clue number three, you guys, you are going to, hi, Brenda Lee from Ontario, you are going to take your 
scored designer series paper and you are going to weave it back and forth making a backwards z and burnish on the folds so this is my top and now this is my inside of my card you guys we said it was a fun fold okay so your clue number three is to fold this so that the designer series paper you want to see on the top is here Oh, Dab Norman, this Tulip Designer Series paper is awesome for it. So um, you guys will see the backside for this card. It won't be something the person obviously sees right away because they will see the, and they'll open it like this. But just know that this is open for people to see. Um, all right, Zaina, no problem. Get a good night's rest. Thanks for sharing, Jeannie Parker. Home from the school board meeting. Woohoo! Hi, Wendy Morin from Edmonton, Alberta. Okay, you guys, I'm watching to see if you guys give me some hearts or give me some thumbs up. Let me know you got your paper scored um, and folded correctly at four inches and eight inches. Don't worry about the next step because we'll talk about gluing in the next step, okay? So we are going to be eventually the next one is four. Okay, I see some thumbs up. So ultimately, um, this, hi, Mary Gunn, having fun tonight. All right, I see lots of the thumbs ups coming, you guys. So we're going to move on to clue number four. All right, you guys, this one's an easy one too. Thank goodness. Okay, so now that you have your paper folded, this is a size of four by three, okay, right? So what do you think's next? We are going to adhere, so clue number four, you guys, adhere this designer paper to your coordinating cardstock too, all right? So you ultimately were, will get a mat of about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now, what you need to glue? We mentioned whatever adhesive you like, but you guys, all you're doing is putting adhesive on the back side of that last panel, okay? So this is the first panel. Hi, Patricia Butts. The second panel, and then the third panel. So on the back side of the third panel, you're going to put adhesive and you're going to adhere it to the mat. So this is cardstock two and pattern paper two. You're adhering them together. Okay. So clue number four, however you guys, you remember, I want to make a real card out of this. So I'm just going to take some washi tape just to kind of help it stay in place. All right. Hi, Aunt Marge. All right, so just remember, this is a fake card for me, you guys. So don't judge how it looks right now because it's not going to match at all. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> I never really do, for those that are new to me, I never do make the official card live with you guys because I don't want to sway you one way or another. All right, <clears throat> so you guys, so far, so good. All we've had so far is adhering paper together. So that was clue number four adhering the back side of the third panel to the mat here. I see some thumbs ups coming through. Woohoo! Uh, Susan Carcello's ready to go. Okay, Betty Pyle's got the thumbs up. I saw a bunch come through. So I'm gonna give it a second more, but this was a pretty easy clue, you guys. So, so far we've got this stuff glued together and we're going to, <laughs> you guys, I'm keeping track here. All right. I see lots of thumbs up. So clue number five is going to be the next clue, you guys. All right, let's flip back. So clue number five, we are going to further adhere paper together, you guys. So we're getting warmed up for the meat and potatoes of this card. But clue number five is you have this um, layer and then you have this layer. And what we ultimately are doing now is adhering these together. So However you want to use, whatever you want to use for adhesive, remember liquid glue, tape runner, however you want to do it. Hi, Nancy Charles. All right, so I'm going to use a little more washi tape to help me adhere mine together. Washi tape, you guys, if you don't know what washi tape is, it's like glorified masking tape. It doesn't rip your paper and it um, helps things stick nicely. So what you're going to do is on the back side of your cardstock too, put your adhesive and when you put this down, you're going to center it left to right, top to bottom, right on top of your designer or pattern paper one. 
So you guys can see now how this is going to be an A2 size card, a fun fold, and hopefully your designer paper matches, you know, one and two, and your coordinating card stock matches as well. Okay, so ultimately you guys can see now how this works, and it's like a little bit of a fun fold card, okay? So there we go. I see thumbs ups, you guys, coming through, which is awesome. So far, you guys, all we've had to do is do adhering stuff together. So now the next couple clues are going to be more work for you, okay? So we're going to move on to clue number six next. Um, I'm seeing thumbs ups coming through. Um, gluing is generally not such a hard task or uh, um uh, just a step to do. All right, Ashley, that looks pretty good. <laughs> you know what? It's not so bad, actually. If this purple would be actually like this blue color, the green kind of matches not so bad, but this is just copy paper. So, okay, you guys, we're going to go on to imaginary clue number six. All right. And this is where it's going to get a little bit dicey, maybe. Okay. Because this is where you guys are going to be able to take it to the sky's the limit, okay? And where your scraps are going to come in of white and vanilla or the, your colored cardstock. And I'm going to show you a couple things that I have. So my class that I have for the Sweet Bundle class is coming up on Thursday. And I have the card sitting right here. So I'm going to try to explain to you what I did and help you, but you, honestly, what you guys decide to do for this is really up to you, okay? All right, so we're on to clue number six. All right, so we technically have a piece of paper left here, and this clue number six is going to be given to you at the same time as clue number seven. So this is actually, hi, Sandy Wicklander. This is clue number seven and six. I'm telling it to you at the same time because however you want to make this work is going to be ultimately up to you. But you do have one piece of paper left. This is your white vanilla two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Ultimately, you guys, this needs your clue six is stamp a sentiment focal images on here if you desire. And this gets adhered onto your inside. Hi, Kay Warren. All right, so clue number six, you guys, is officially stamp sentiments, focal images, and coordinating inks, and then adhere this to the inside of your card here. Just tuning in a little bit. Well, I'm glad I could catch you and say hi to you, Kay. All right, so what are you going to do for your stamps focal images? That's completely up to you. There is for this card, there's a flowering fields stamp set that could be um, coordinated with a little tulip and a little sentiment, but I will tell you that I did use the biggest fan and on my inside, I chose a really small sentiment like happy birthday or even happy father's day fit perfectly. And then there's a whole bunch of little stars here. Like there's not a whole bunch. There's three stars. Okay. There's also some blotchy background. And so this set worked perfect. So the sentiments were here not to exceed two and a half by two inches. Like ultimately the sentiment you want is something smaller. If you know now that the inside is so small, if you don't want to put a focal image on because you like to write more, then don't put a focal image on. If you want to put a focal image on and keep it small, you can still sign your name on the side. So clue number six, you guys, is officially decorating this. And I left the main clue number seven for last. So, and you might just hesitate and watch, and I'm going to, I'm going to just do this because clue number seven, I don't want to miss saying clue number seven, you guys. Clue number seven is what do you do with the front? Okay. Now you kind of know that you have a white piece on your inside, but clue number seven is decorating the front. I um, I have my class on Thursday, and just to give you a little kind of insider information as to what I did, I took a star, and so this is where the scraps come in, you guys. I had on here scraps of white vanilla coordinating cardstock. So the designer series paper for Hey Sports Fan has some printed out pennants and flags. So I actually didn't even use 
stamps on the outside of my card that I'm going to share with you on Thursday night. Because ultimately, if you picture it, I took this, like this star and that pennant, and I put it on here. And I added a few more stars, and I added a cute little bow on the pennant, something like that. And then I, you know, so just to give you a heads up, like you could just decorate this with some, um, some shapes or some circles. Here's like another example, like there's a ticket that could get put on the front. Now with the tulips, um, you might be like, well, I have a really busy background and I don't really want to put anything else. Well, I mentioned on there scraps of white or vanilla. Okay, so what Deb Norman did on her card is she cut a scrap and she die cut a little label that was about this big, okay? Maybe two inches by a half to one inch. She cut it out with a little label and she, let's see what she did. She matted it on another label, okay? And then she just put a sentiment right here and left it and didn't add any extra because it was so, this, this is a more busy pattern. Now, the pattern that I picked for my, hi, Rose, but, but, but I always have a hard time saying your name, Bodison, <laughs> Bodosan. <laughs> I picked a pattern that is more subtle with just some lines, and it needed some sprucing up. And so that's why I said scrap. So this clue number six and seven, you guys, these clues, I should say, are kind of at this, you know, figure out what you want your outside to look like what you want your inside. And this is where it might be, you know, testing your creativity skills, you guys. Um, I don't know what you're using for designer series paper. If you want to keep it simple, I'm going to send you, if you want to watch here for a quick second, I am going to show you the card. I'm not going to show you my card, but I'm going to show you. So Deb Norman made this. I'm going to show you an example of what she did. She so you can see I use my pieces for um, class just like hers. I mentioned she just put a little sentiment on a die and then she layered it on another die. Okay, so just to give you guys a visual of something that you could do. Now, I didn't, um, I had you guys do, um, do that instead. So just putting a mat on the inside. Now, if you want to go and die cut and do something like what Deb did and more like case this, um, it's completely up to you, but this is my sneaky peeky, you guys. I'm not going to keep showing this to you because I don't want to sway you, but I did want to show you like, like picture just a sentiment and you saw what she did with the ribbon. Yes, Patty Robinson. So many great possibilities with this layout. Um, again, mine, when you see it on Thursday and I share it in the event, you're going to see mine is more like this on my front. Oh, have a good evening too, Rose. Okay. Um, here's another example for the class that I'm doing Thursday, another star with a, a pennant. Like here's stars with the tickets and then more stars. If you have this suite of products and you are needing some Father's Day cards, you guys, you could totally make some Father's Day happy birthday cards for some guys with the very baseball themed. So there's going to be a little bit of time that you guys need to figure out what you want here and what you want on here. I think your inside is going to be relatively easy. Um, it's going to be stamping your sentiment, focal image, wherever you want it, maybe not a focal image. Ultimately, that gets glued into here. All right. I am going to, because I don't want to forget to tell you about this, but clue number eight, you guys. Clue number eight <laughs> I always have a clue in here that talks about ribbon and embellishments. So clue number eight was going to be um, add ribbon to your card somehow. So before you get assembling everything that goes on the front, figure out how you can, I challenge you, figure out how you can put ribbon on your card. Uh, I had mentioned I did that little pennant and I think I made a teensy wincy little um, white and red striped bow. <laughs> I want to see a yellow polka dot bikini, but it's a red and white po um, striped bow. And so I put that at the base of where my, my flag is. I actually have a flag for my card, not the pennant. Um, but I challenge you in clue number eight, figure out a way to incorporate ribbon in your card and then, um, you know, wherever it goes and then embellishing your card um, to your heart's content. If you guys remember that one. And I actually, the clue number is wrong, you guys, but this is always the last clue, basically, is embellish and sell it to your heart's content. 
and I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but Deb Nor and it's hard to see Stella, but there's like this iridescent -y glow over all of the tulips. She stella the tulips, all the red tulips. So super cool. Okay, there was one final glimpse at this, you guys, so that in case you're at a loss for what to do. Yeah, Darla, Deb's card was so awesome. I came across that. Um, I don't remember, Deb, if that was for, it was a team swap. Um, I can't remember if it was um, on tour. Um, I don't remember if it was on when we did on tour, if that was your card, but I got that, Deb, and I hung on to it. I'm like, this is going to be a great layout for a mystery card. So I hung on to it. <laughs> so, all right, so you guys, like, I know that was maybe a little rougher or maybe harder. Like the first, everything up until clue number seven was really easy because it was a matter of assembly. But now the, 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 what is it is in your court? The ball is in your court. I thought I was going to say the bull is in your court. The ball is in your court. Um, you guys figure out how you want to decorate your inside. This is going to be so awesome because you guys are going to have so many different ideas. What's great about this now is we're going to start sharing our cards. Um, and I want to flip down one last time to talk about what, oh, Cindy said it was fine. Okay, good. We roll with the punches, you guys. We always punt if we need to. <laughs> and we did and we didn't. It wasn't even, it was a good punt. I think we got a touchdown with that punt. <laughs> um, so what do you do now? So especially for those that are new, you might not know what to do. Like, well, you made this awesome card, but I want to see it. Others want to see it. The greatest thing about this is that everybody's cards are generally going to look similar because the layout is the same. But what happens is I do not think we've ever duplicated anything ever within a mystery night because we're all using different things. I mean, some of you guys are stamping together with pairs, so you might make the same as who you're stamping with, but mostly everybody's got different stuff. Um, so this fun fold is going to be awesome to see everybody's different combinations of their card socks and their designer or pattern paper. Um, I think trinket. Yeah, this layout was fun. Um, I don't know where Deb saw it, but I, I saw it. I'm like, this is cool. Um, so what you want to do though now, if you're new, is I want you to share your creations. So I have an event in Facebook. Um, it's the Mystery Card Night. You guys probably saw it when I published it. Um, in the discussion, there is going to be in a moment when I get off and have 30 seconds to share the post, I'm going to share a graphic that looks like this that says, time to share. Post a photo of your creation in the comments for a chance to win a prize. So what you're going to do is look for that, and I'm going to kind of show you, especially if you're new or maybe you aren't new, but you haven't known what to do. Um, what you do is you go into my Cards by Christine Facebook page, and in my events section, oh my gosh, I remember I had, they switched the stuff, so hang on. We need to get to Cards by Christine, oh here, wait, the events thing, here, events, here it is, okay. There is an event, May 16th, 2022, 6 p.m. Here's the event. So you need to get into the event, you guys, and in the discussion. So right now it says start discussion. But um, Judy, yeah, if, if you got some way out of everybody's ideas to figure out how to get it down to one page, great. And if you still need help, you reach out to me. Um, Linda had so much fun. Yay. Um, awesome. So you guys have until Wednesday night at midnight to share your creation. And when I am done here, I'm going to go in here and start a discussion. And I'm going to create a post that where you guys can put your pictures. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to see if I can find... Um, last month. Let's see. Oh my gosh. I don't know if this is going to be easier or hard. Um, hmm. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So it used to be super, super easy events and hang on. You guys will give me 30 seconds here to see if I can figure out. Oh my God. This is all stuff they want me to see. There's gotta be, oh, here we go. So this is upcoming. Oh, past. Here it is. I want to show you guys last time how it worked. So in the mystery card, these are all my classes. Here's the mystery card from April. When you click on discussion, this is where I always post the replay. And then here's what it looks like. We hope you had a great time solving the mystery. Um, comment on this thread by Wednesday. and It'll be um, May 18th at 11 p.m. Central to be entered to win the prizes. And in the comments, 
You can see here, guys, where everybody's pictures were from last time, okay? And so all you have to do is add your card to that. And if you want to comment anything, you definitely can. But that's what you guys are going to be watching for momentarily here after I get off is you're going to watch for that post in the actual event for May and then add your card to it. So, whew. so you guys, I really hope, like when I saw this card that Deb sent me, you know, I got it in the team swap. I was so excited to recreate it. And I am seeing that you, I, I just know that you guys will love this layout. I know Laura just said that she will make this one again. Oh my gosh. I was, I love sharing these kind of fun, 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 fun folds with you, right? F U N N folds with you. <laughs> Mary Gunn will like that. Um, so, um, and make it multiple times, you guys. If you're at a loss, this is so easy. You really just need some pattern paper. You need some cardstock colors. And then just figure out what you want to put on the front for a sentiment. The designer series paper is what speaks loudly with this type of a card. Uh, find a really pretty pattern and share that with somebody. You guys, you know you have a lot of pattern or designer paper. Just cut it up. Make it into pretty cards and send it out to people. <laughs> hi, Jane West. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, hi, Jamie Shipman. Um, catching the replay. Yep, catch the replay later. It's an easy one. Um, um, Penny Powell, we need to chat because you signed up for a class and I have it sitting here and I want to make sure you still want it. So <laughs> um, I can't remember which. It was from last week. So um, I'll have to catch the replay. Okay, yeah, no problem. You guys remember if you're, you tuned in late and you didn't catch the beginning, as soon as I hit end here, it takes about two minutes and then the replay will be available. And as soon as I have a moment, I will upload it to Facebook and make it available right away so you guys can even catch it in, I might have said that wrong. I meant to say YouTube. Um, I'm gonna put it into YouTube um, as well. So I keep all my videos in YouTube and Facebook. Um, if you guys are new to me and interested in any information about classes, please reach out to me. My information was shown below. You guys can e e email me, reach out to me via text or phone call whenever you like. Um, I'm here to help you with your stamping, crafting, and card making needs. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, Leslie. All right. So I think that's it, you guys. Um, how much to send you? Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what it was. Um, I have the class here, Penny. I will send you a, a private message, okay? Because I'm going to be tuning out. If you guys ever need to reach me, just know that I don't always catch the posts, like your comments on a Facebook video when I'm live, I catch them. But if you comment after the fact, I don't always see them. So if you need an answer to something, please reach out to me privately so I can help you out. Oh, Deborah had fun. Yay. Woohoo. Okay, you guys. Well, that was May's Mystery Card Night in the books. We were, were successful. We rolled right through that. It was a nice card. I'm excited to start working on the June layout with you guys. <laughs> I should say for you guys, not with you guys. <laughs> All right, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you guys. I will be live tomorrow with Tip Tuesday, and I'm very excited to announce that this afternoon, I worked on finally the hand pen memories and more class that's coming up next week. Ooh, I waited till the end. Um, you know how I am. I'm just in time kind of person. So those packages for those that signed up for the class, they are going in the mail on Thursday. Uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday, probably Thursday though. Um, they're designed. There's very little that needs to be die cut or cut. So that's awesome. Um, my mom's coming, I believe on Wednesday or Thursday to help me with that. And so just know those are going to be going out in the mail this week. Um, I have that class in person on Monday and via Facebook live next Wednesday. Woohoo. All right. So we'll be live tomorrow. I'll show you those cards so you guys can see them. I may or may not have one spot left. I don't know. I have to do the tallying and figure out because I don't want to overcommit <laughs> before I go live tomorrow and show the cards off. So you're going to love them. Thank you so much, Andrea. My garden awaits. Um, um, Barbara Gabby says, can you buy the PDF? Yes. If you're referring to the Memories and More card class that I have next week, the PDF tutorial will be available in my online store probably next Thursday. Or if you want to just... Um, um, pay for it via electronic payment or set, sometimes people send me checks. I can just email the PDF to you too. You guys don't have to get the PDF from my online store if you want it. I can very easily email it to people as well. And then you pay, save a little um, credit card processing fee. So, all right, I think I'm done. I think that I got all the comments. Um, all right, perfect, Barbara. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be in touch next week then. Um, let me know if you want to pay for it via my website or if you want to pay for it a different means and save the dollar. So, all right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. Enjoy the rest of your Monday night, and we'll see you at some point tomorrow before 5 o'clock is my plan. <laughs> so, all right, love you guys.